Welcome to my office. I just went to the Spokane Reptile Expo. This was held on the 15th at the warehouse on North Nevada. The expo is in its third year and it was mostly snakes. Holly's Reptiles was there. They had a big booth with a lot of supplies. That was nice. I got some cork bark. I wish that I had a cork bark farm, you know, just like, I don't know, maybe I could 3D print it or something. It would be fun. I did get some new additions while I was at the expo. And Adam Erickson of Erickson's Exotics was kind enough to gift me a B Classy and uh, Hogna species Arizona, which from what I can identify so far appears to be the Hogna Carolinensis. I say that because just on quick inspection, her underside is all black. Uh, a lot of the other species have have different markings on their underside, but she's a big girl and I'm going to show her to you. She might have a chance to compete in some of the tarantula deathmatch uh, episodes coming up. I've had a couple of molts. Let me uh, go check everybody out, let you know how they're doing, show you what I got. My grandma stole a pulchra, snot gurgle, lives in this exoterra. And as you can see, it has different layers. It's kind of like uh, you could go fossil digging in there maybe. And the reason for that is that I had it set up as this beautiful desert landscape for my Bonapelma calcades when I first got her and I was still pretty inexperienced and I'm still inexperienced but I was less experienced then than I am now and you know that was about nine months ago or so and I just thought well I'll replicate her natural environment but it came to be that she was a climber and it was not safe for her so rather than um, dig all of that out. I added a bunch of cocoa fiber and it still has a couple of caves in it. She's throwing a little bit of her trash out. She's like, here's one leg. So what did I get? I got this H. Gygus Cameroon Red and it's a quite a, a spunky little thing. It's uh, eaten and I did as Tom Moran suggested and put up a cork bark in here and that encouraged the little guy to make a burrow so already it has made a burrow there was a little one that i made with my finger but right away after i, I put the cork bark in the next morning there's the burrow so it's true what he says that uh while you can start a burrow with your finger if you really want to encourage them to burrow quicker put something in there so they feel secure um, I've had a molt, uh, my Carabina Versicolor has molted. Um, this one still, I do not know if it is male or female, but it's pushed the molt down into the bottom of its web tube here, and um, here's the actual tarantula. Now here is my Hogna species Arizona, and she is up here in the corner. The next one that I got at the expo, here's the bee classy. It's a little sling, it's in here. You can see it's eaten. And it did have a little tiny bit of, looks like maybe the abdomen part of its molt was stuck. So I had to cut the rest of the molt free, but it ate and it's looking good. And I think that it's gonna do just fine. Another one that I added was this HMAC. And the HMAC, I added this one at the last moment. It's kind of like I took another, took it to another level, which, you know, I, I could be wrong. There's so many species out there that 
that I don't know about, but of the species that, that I am, I know about, the HMAC is one that I find to be absolutely beautiful and intriguing because it's a baboon species that's arboreal and uh, from, from uh, Togo, a Togo starburst baboon is the common name. Uh, as Danielle at Erickson Exotics described it, ball of lightning. So I was very careful when I rehoused this one. Everything went well and I was glad that I had the extra protection of the bin when I rehoused. And right there at the, f at the very base of the cork bark, that is where it has made a burrow and it is burrowed down underneath there and is hiding. And I don't expect to see it much. I know that as spiderlings, they like to um, they like to hang out at the base of, of trees, that's what I read, and this one has stuck to that. And I have a P. metallica. This one also came from Erickson Exotics. And this one is bigger than the last one that I had that um, passed away uh, from a bad molt. Um, that was a really unfortunate circumstance. I woke up in the morning and um, in one of my last videos, you'll hear about how I lost that one. So this is a uh, beautiful, beautiful P. metallica. It's already starting to show some of its blue. I will insert a photo of it so that you can see, and I will insert a photo of some of these others so that you can see them. And one more that I have really, really been wanting um, is the C. olivaceum. And this one is the sling. I uh, also got this one from Erickson. He was really the only, he and uh, Danielle Erickson Exotics were the only people who had um, tarantulas that I saw. So there's the little one there. And this is a tarantula that is from the Middle East, also called Mideast Gold. I think that you can find them in Israel, Syria. I don't know about Cyprus. Um, I'd have to look it up, but I will at one point do some kind of special on them and give more information. I did a bunch of rehousing. I have my uh, Therophosinae species Rotan. She's in here. This is a 10 gallon. Uh, she's quite comfortable. She was in one of these basketball cases, but I moved her up into this so that I could put the wolf spider um, into the basketball case because it is pretty fast and active. And then I had a molt. This is my uh, LP number one, and it molted just a couple days ago. I did put my um, B. albopelosum Honduran in here, the one that has the coconut shell, l'elephant, into a bin for now. And for my birthday, I got two 10 gallons, a 20 gallon long, it looks like 20 gallon long, and a five gallon tank from my sister, from a young gentleman who is breeding geckos. And he's up to using Exoterra, so he liquidated these and these were $25 for the whole lot of them. I didn't need to get tops for them, but yeah, I thought that was a great deal. My, my piece of busca moving around in there. Sorry, the lighting isn't the best. Not sure what we got going on, some exploration. My T. violaceus, you never really see this one. And just like the H. mac, it, it has a burrow at the base of the tree. I did rehouse my um, A. geniculata. I tried to sex it, but it's still a little too small. And then last night I had a little bit of a scare. I came in here to close up and turn out the lights and my E. species red was all kind of like curled up in its water dish. And I thought, and it just started saying, no, 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 this can't be. And I scooped it up and it was fine. It was getting a drink and I just panicked. I mean, I really, I was like, how is it possible that you would drown in there? You, you just couldn't. So, yep. And uh, I have my H. David Bowie. Uh, I can kind of see right there and it's growing. 
Here it is, little huntsman getting bigger. Uh, a lot of my my um, dwarf species are growing. This is my um, Tatiana brunipes, and I have my C. rite. Uh, let's see if we can see it in there. There it is, kind of blurry. And then I do have a really, really tiny C. elegans, and it is in the very bottom of its deli cup, and I can turn that upside down and see it, and it's very cute little thing and it's doing good and there's my scorpion my scorpion has eaten well this past week everyone's doing great here in this bioactive terrarium that i set up and there's one of my millipedes this is an ivory millipede for some reason these little guys like to come up to the top sometimes I would say the ivory millipedes are some of the most active. So I don't see the ghost or, or the, the smoky ghosts. And I don't see the this pink leg pink legged millipedes. I don't see those two species out. But I do see the Texas Texas brown or the desert desert gold, I think it's called, and the ivories. They are out a lot. So I hope you've enjoyed this update. Um, there is definitely more coming. I have a deathmatch, um, kind of a, a different one. I mean, it's not it's not necessarily a real um, dynamic fighting deathmatch. It's it's almost a little more comedic. Um, that one's going to to be this Wednesday. The next week I might have something special for the tarantula deathmatch. Something I haven't had before and I am working on the educational videos. I haven't uh, had time to get those going yet so those are definitely on the way but I, I want to put more thought and more detail into them and make sure that they're that they're really gonna gonna provide some good information. And other than that I look forward to your comments and um, please subscribe if you're interested and I will talk to you later.